the parents of the people that run it uh, go down there every year. So they invited them down last year, so they went down for a week. And, uh, United States of America. <laughs> so it stands. One, One nation, nation, under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, good evening. Is there anyone out there, Shauna, that you know of for public input? We do have a few that are joining us. I'm just trying to see if I can get um, the screen. But no, anybody on for public input? No one here? No. All right, review and approve council agenda. No additions or deletions? No, sorry. I'll move to approve as presented. Second. Second. Right. Further discussion? Favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passed unanimously. Consent agenda items. Item A, approve 11 12 City Council special meeting minutes. Item B, approve 12 7 City Council meeting minutes. Item C, approve 12 21 Council minutes. Item D, approve hiring full time police officers. Item E, approve Tri County Humane Society contract. Item F, approve American Legion liquor license renewal. Item G, approve LRIP grant resolution. Item H, approve loader lease. Item I, approve HSA MOUs by resolution for maintenance employees. Item J, approve HSA MOUs by resolution for police officer bargaining unit. And item K, approve HSA MOUs by resolution for police sergeant bargaining units. I just have a quick question on I, J, and K. Um, under those resolutions, it's showing a date of uh, December 31st, 2021. Yeah. I thought we were doing a three-year contract. Uh, the MOUs that are for health insurance, we do those every year because your health insurance premiums have to be renewed every year. Okay. All right. Somebody want to move A through K? A, let's see, A through K? So moved. I'll, I'll second. second. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passed unanimously. Carla. Item seven, regular <coughs> agenda items. Item eight, first <laughs> amendment to development agreement, executive express. Do you wanna go right there? John? Thank you, Mayor Miller. Um, I'll keep this brief. This uh, is apparently pretty straightforward. Um, city staff, along with Larry Logeman of executive express, uh, we're requesting review and approval of uh, the first amendment to development agreement regarding the payment schedule of the previously approved TIF package for the property and project. You may recall this dates back to uh, 2017 when we reviewed and approved the package for that project. Um, just due to the, uh, the timing of when the work was done, not really off schedule, but just the timing of the work and the, uh, the timing of when it was reviewed by the assessor's office, um, given the review for the uh, determination of the increased valuation for uh, increment payments. Uh, until now, the property has not been eligible for any increment payments. Um, and the, the previous agreement anticipated that there would have been several earlier, twice yearly payments by now. Um, the proposed revisions wouldn't change the overall uh, package amount. If anything, the, the uh, expected payments might go down a little bit. That's just fluctuations in the valuation. Um, but it would only revise the schedule to start payments um, in March of 2021 and then extend through 2028. No um, extension of uh, timeline aside from just basically moving it forward a few years. Um, staff is supportive of the request for the amendment um, and this has been coordinated with uh, both Tammy Omdahl with Northland Securities and Mary Ippel of uh, Taft Law, which formerly of Briggs and Morgan, and they have no concerns with it. Um, basically getting them onto the schedule where, where uh, we approved them to be and getting them squared away. All right, Council, got any questions for John? I just have a quick question. Um, you know, Larry Logeman owns Executive Express and they own the building. Uh, Groom is in the building operating. Yep. Um, is there any conflict with, with Groom and, and Executive Express? I'm not quite understanding how that one works. No, we actually, we had a, a Zoom conference to uh, review those aspects. Uh, previously, and there, there's no uh, conflict or anything that needs, needs to be resolved. Basically, 
uh, Larry sold that portion to Grew, but he still retains ownership of all the property which the TIF pertains to. Um, Groom isn't a uh, party to the TIF agreement, so we don't really need to revise any of that. That was a question we had too when that initially came up. So Larry actually still owns the property? Yep, under two, two uh, business ownerships. There's Executive Express and then Executive Express LLC or something along those lines. There's, there's two separate, and each one of those owns a, a component of the property. I appreciate that. Yep. All right, any other questions? I'd make a motion to approve. Second. Second. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Passed unanimously. Thanks, John. Item B, graffiti removal at the ledge. I would have the second. I can't get it to come up. Oh, my God. Um, let me pass out the bowl of graffiti back here. I think I wrote that in the... Uh, Agenda item that you were right before that. Did you get to me? No, I, it's not working. <clears throat> <clears throat> Well, we'll see if we can't um, figure it out. If we can't, I can, um, I've got them on my laptop. I could walk around and show you each some of the pictures if you wanted to have a recollection of what, what's out there. But if I wanted to share that with you. So, um, so what we're here tonight is um, <clears throat> we received a quote last, last year, uh, probably June or something like that for, for graffiti removal out there. And that, Guy came back at $150,000. Nope, we're not doing that, right? So <clears throat> moving on. Uh, Jeff Ryder got a hold of some guy that he knew. Um, and then uh, we just met with him, or Meredith really met with him last Thursday, Friday. I'm not sure, whatever day it was out there on site. Just to reiterate with him again, is he still interested? And what would the number be? Um, and this is the time to do it because the, the quarry is frozen. So it's easy access in and out. <clears throat> so what you see in front of you is basically his proposal to remove all the graffiti out there. Um, he does talk a little bit about some areas where there's some snow on it. Depending, we may not be able to get it all if it's covered by snow. But at the end of the day, we're looking at a, at a cost of about 90, well, not at, um, $9,250 to do all that graffiti removal out there. Now I know that's the, that's what we're here tonight for you guys to discuss and debate this, however you wanted to do it. Some say leave it, some say no, some say only take parts of it. And so that's why we're here tonight. If we're gonna do it, this is the time to act on it, just because he can get in there and get it taken care of before uh, the snow starts to melt. The one thing that we did talk to him about, or Meredith, excuse me, I don't wanna take Meredith's uh, glory here, uh, about actually doing, looking at taking only parts of it. And you'll see that in his first bullet point underneath there, where he basically talks about the selective uh, blasting of graffiti is chosen, may take more time and uh, may increase the cost, uh, would require a city employee to be on site to instruct exactly which ones stay and go. So that's, we just wanted to lay everything on the table here. Um, I can certainly show you pictures if you want. If anybody wants to see them, just let me know. Um, I'm here, Meredith can come up and talk too, but it's mainly for you guys to, to discuss tonight. So our proposal to city staff is to remove it all for $9,200. I think we <coughs> I think we'd take it all and Mike and I go out there the next day and put our own out there, start it over. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think <clears throat> as much as I would like to leave some of them, I would agree that it, if we're gonna do it, let's take it all and, yeah. Is, that on both sides or one That's side? That's everything, right? That's That's everything. Yeah, it's everything, yeah. Both sides? Yeah. You're talking about the big quarry, not the small one up by the road. Yeah. Because there isn't anything in there. But isn't there? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And the other thing, too, and Meredith has 
Why don't you come up and tell you what, tell them what you and Judd did last year, trying to track the history of that. So, <clears throat> so um, and and actually, you know, we recognize that it's a his, historic site. I mean, it's been around for. I, that's a question I still need to call Stearns County and find out exactly how long it's been around. But I, I would gauge probably 50, 60 years. Yeah, keep um, going. So, yeah, hundred. Okay. See, I get. Yep. Yeah. So. But with the graffiti, um, you know that you know that is something that we wanted to document. So I actually had uh, Judd, a coworker, he gave me a ride. I actually went twice with another coworker as well, and I videotaped everything in the quarry um, so that we would have that. Um, our plan is to actually do a history of the ledge, so it would be a matter of documenting, you know, how how when it started and pictures from the Stearns County Historical Society and then have that so that'll actually be a feature when people come on site that they recognize you know the beauty of the site but then also um, the history of the site and so we definitely have everything documented so nothing will be forgotten um, so that was kind of uh, something that we, we definitely will be doing well, right. some of those need to be forgotten that's for sure yeah. hey 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 come on now <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It took me a Yours long personally? time to climb that rock to get up there. <laughs> I, I agree with Rick. I'd rather leave some of it, but if for $9,200, if they're going to take it all off, yeah. We'll let them start with a fresh canvas. There you go. That's right. I'll be right behind them. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else got any comments or questions? No. I'm okay with that. Yeah. I'll move to approve. I'll second that. Further discussion. When do they? When will they start? Do you know, Bill? No. Did he say exactly? Before, before the ice melts. Right. <laughs> yeah. She said probably within the next, probably four to six weeks. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. That's a big deal. All right. <coughs> Further discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passed unanimously. Thanks, Thank you. Bill. All right. Item C. Consider maintenance employee collective bargaining agreement. So the next three items are all uh, our remaining um, collective bargaining agreements um, that expire at the end of uh, December of 2020. Um, essentially all of the, the uh, bargaining uh, units all have the same consistent language. Uh, these are three-year contracts. Um, this year was the implementation of our pay plan. Um, the additional two years was one and a half percent. We did um, provide a little bit of an increase in our health insurance and then those cap th for this year, but those costs are capped. Um, so we were able to consistently do that. Um, I'd be happy to answer any questions if you have on that. The first one before you is the maintenance employee. Um, so you need to make separate uh, motions for each and they all need to be done by um, a resolution. So the caps on the insurance, <coughs> We increase their cap this year a little bit. I didn't yeah, by nine hundred, by nine hundred dollars annually. And that's yeah. for the three years, and that's going to be right. Yeah, that's it. That's yep. it for three years. Mm -hmm. So, if you recall, we did approve the police admin um, agreement on the fourth of January. So this is they're all consistently the same. And this year we did add the police sergeants. They are separated from the police officers. So we have four unions instead of in the past, we've had three. Anybody got any questions? No. I'll, I'll move to approve the maintenance employee collective bargaining agreement. I'll second. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passed unanimously. And item D is the police sergeant, same thing. I move to approve. I'll second. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passed unanimously. And item E is for the police officers. I'll move to approve. Second. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Passed unanimously. Thank you. Item F, consider resolution on the second amendment to development agreement with Silver Leaf. Um, if you recall, back in November, we had Lamont companies that had requested two things out of the city to consider. Um, one was extending their um, TIF agreement out um, to, I believe it was to 25 or 26 years. 
And then the other one was is that they wanted to raise the minimum assessment. And at that time, the um, council chose, um, they, you did a, make a motion to um, approve uh, moving forward with the minimum assessment agreement. Um, and increasing that or allowing them to decrease that minimum assessment agreement. If you recall, the minimum assessment agreement is really something that they had brought forward um, to us. Um, and so what you have before you, um, for, in order for that to be considered, we do have to actually have to do an amendment to this agreement. Um, and so that's done uh, by the resolution that is attached. Um, and it gives them the ability to, to lower that minimum assessment from that 12 point um, one, two, five down to, I believe it was 8.9, if I recall. Uh, they will still have to get approval through the county. Um, and so I know that they've been working with the county assessor's office as well. But our portion of this requires this resolution to be approved. The school district have to be involved with that? I too? don't I don't believe so. I believe it's just the county if I'm... I don't think the school district's involved with this. Because it's the value piece yeah. of it. Yeah. The assessors. In yeah. The so when we do the motion, can we do all of them at one time? Well, there, is just, just, there is just one, the resolution. Just a resolution. There, were, there were a lot of attachments to this, and I, I understand. There were a lot of attachments to a lot of those, but really only one motion that needs to be made, and that's approving that resolution. Well, I'd like to make that motion um, to approve authorizing the execution of a Second Amendment to Development Agreement, First Amendment to Assessment Agreement, <laughs> and collateral assignment of TIF note as presented. Second. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passed unanimously. Item G, consider resolution on additional half percent sales tax. Well, as part of our conversation um, that we have had kind of ongoing, um, even as uh, ongoing as uh, this evening during our work session, um, we have talked um, about the desire of the city to consider um, the possibility of adding an additional sales tax that would allow us to um, help us pay for some capital improvement projects that we have on the horizons. Um, we did start this effort last year um, about this same time. Um, the legislature does allow cities to do this. Um, and what we need to do is have a resolution um, in place that um, show our specific projects with the dollar amounts and the amount of time that we're going to be collecting um, for that. Um, and that needs to be done by the end of January. Um, and so through our discussion, um, the resolution that um, we have attached um, shows our projects. Um, the three projects that we have included in that resolution um, are for 10th Avenue uh, Regional Corridor. Um, this is really designed for the south side of 10th Avenue from the railroad tracks to Parkway Drive um, in an amount of $10 million. Uh, we then have um, regional trail connections um, in an amount of 7.5 million. And then we have um, public safety facilities, um, and that is in the amount of 20 million. Um, the total amount of um, sales tax that is estimated to be collected um, over a 25 year period would be um, 37.5 million. Um, the legislature would be the first step with this um, resolution, and we would need to get their um, authorization and if it does um, get approved by the legislature, it will then be put on a referendum for the voters um, of whom could approve all or one or none of the projects or any combination of, of that, uh, which would be required to be done in a general election. Any, any questions, comments, council? I'll move to approve the resolution. Second. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? <clears throat> Passed unanimously. All right. Approve bills. Pay the bills. Second. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Passed unanimously. I don't have anything. Shauna, you got anything? Uh, just if anyone is interested, the Coalition of Greater Minnesota Cities Lobbying Day, a little bit different this year than in the past, um, is on this Wednesday. Um, it is all virtual. Um, so if you are interested, um, I think I sent you the link. Um, you're more than welcome to RSVP and register for that. I do plan on sitting in. I'd like to make sure that we stay up on the legislative priorities, particularly now that we're going to be using the sales tax. So that, that's really my only update I have at this time. I have a question for you. Sure. Uh, <clears throat> when are we going to finish up our little project? I am waiting for Susan to be in touch <coughs> with 
with that and get me her schedule so that we can do that. In February was what we were looking at, trying to do that in with her schedule. So I'm just waiting for dates so I can share those with you, and I, I don't have that yet. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Anything else, Council? John, you got anything? No, but just a reminder, I'll check in individually if you'd like that stuff in. So. All right. John, the other John? Yes, sir. Chief? No, sir. Bill? Anybody online at home, Keith? Keith is online, but I don't think he has anything. Okay, Carla. All right, and we're adjourned at 6.50. Thank you.